You are listening to the Wool Academy podcast. This is episode number 44. Hello and welcome. My name is Elizabeth Van Delden and once a week we talk to an industry expert from the wool industry supply chain from farm to fashion and beyond, delivering strategies and insights to be successful in wool and showcasing those beautiful stories wool has to tell. Today, I'm very happy to welcome Rita Curlis Samuelson. Rita is the Director of International Wool Marketing at ASI. ASI is the American Sheep Industry Association. Rita oversees ASI's domestic and international wool marketing programs, as well as quality improvement, product development and government procurement. In addition, Rita also works with international customers of American wool and wool products. Welcome, Rita. It's good to have you on the show today. How are you? Elizabeth, thank you for having me. It's a joy to be here. Yes, thank you for taking the time. I would like to first to ask you to tell us a little bit more about yourself and the work that you do in the wool industry. Thank you. Um, I have been working with the American sheep industry and the, its division, the American Wool Council, for uh, a number of years. Uh, spent most of my life in the wool industry. Grew up on a sheep ranch in northwest Colorado. And uh, shearing season was always my favorite time of year, so I was happy to go and get my marketing degree, work in retail, and then combine all of that experience together to work for the American Wool Council. So uh, um, we at the American Sheep Industry Association, the American Wool Council, we represent all 80,000 American sheep ranchers in the United States, and we help to market their product, American Wool. Uh, and we do that by having programs geared towards domestic industry and the, and the foreign market. Yeah, I didn't actually know that you grew up on a sheep farm. I, I read that earlier in your biography, so that's very <laughs> interesting insight as well. So you, you grew up in wool and you're still fully engaged in wool. It's, um, it's one of those rare, um, those rare things in life where all your life experiences sort of fall together and make sense in a, in a job. And so, um, I went and got my marketing degree and wanted to go into retail. Never did I dream that my experience on a sheep ranch would be uh, be used after I got my uh, marketing degree. But understanding what happens on a sheep ranch, how wool is prepared, about breeding, genetics, some of the issues that producer face, faces has been really important to me. And I feel uh, valuable for me to understand what producers face, what's realistic to do on ranches and farms and how we can best represent those producers. And then my marketing degree has been helpful in finding ways to actually uh, market those, to market wool and find new uh, customers for wool. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I find that really interesting. And it's true, you, you never know the different experiences that you make, how they add up and then form a career. <laughs> and you yeah, you don't, yeah, you don't. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier um, that you actually represent 80,000 sheep farmers in the U.S. Can you tell us a little yes. bit more about the American sheep industry and, uh, and sheep and wool industry and how is it like, set up and how is it structured? And like, maybe also sure. where are the farmers generally uh, based, etc. Um, in the United States, we have, as I mentioned earlier, 80,000 growers. And most of the sh actual sheep, the larger sheep production, is in the western states, in the mountain regions such as um, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and other large sheep production states are Texas and California. However, there are sheep in every uh, state of the United States. Even in Hawaii, we have sheep. And um, we have a diversity of wool, types of wool in um, – produced in the United States, everything from 31, 30 micron wool all the way up to 18 and a half micron wool. So we have quite a diverse type of production, wool production. And about about half of our wool clip right now is exported and about 20% goes into the military market to help provide safe products for our war fighters. And then also the rest is stays here in the domestic market and 
uh, you said you said most of the bigger farms are in the western states. And how would how big would typically be a sheep farm um, that you would call a larger farm? Um, there's yeah, there's a large percentage that are two thousand to five thousand, and there's a number of them that are up to ten thousand ewes. So that's just the mother sheep, if you will, and then of course they have lambs each spring. So there's some very large operations in those in that mid what we call the territory states that the mountain states texas and california some large producers but i would say on an average in that region it's two to five thousand and then on the farm flock on the uh west of the east of the Missis east of the mississippi they're closer to a hundred to five hundred sheep and some are just hobby farmers where they have a job during the week and have some land and uh, enjoy raising sheep during the weekend and uh, as, as more of a hobby and rather than those that uh, entire livelihood depend on wool mm -hmm. or, and lamb. Okay. And w you mentioned already that some of your wool clip goes into the military, and but what else kind of products would American wool be good for? Or also maybe what is special oh. about American wool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, American wool goes into the, the basic marks. We don't have a lot of wool that goes into the carpet market, which are the coarser type wools. There's a, there's a little bit that would go into hand-woven carpets, but there's a, not a lot for the wool for the carpet market. We do have some wools that are coarse enough for upholstery fabrics, um, industrial uses, uh, but the majority of it goes into the apparel market. Uh, I mentioned the military, uh, we, a large portion goes into dress uniforms. And then we've also developed some products that helps protect shoulders for the, by wool being naturally fire resistant. So the military market apparel items, and then the uh, hosiery market socks is an, also an important market for American wool. And as I mentioned, apparel, slacks, menswear, women's wear. Uh, one of the uh, advantages you asked about what's different about American wool, American wools tend to be loftier than foreign wools, and that means that they're just a little bit spongier, great for knitwear, and you can measure the loftiness of American wool by its resistance to compression, and so they're just, uh, that's one of the key differences. We do have American merino wool here in the United States. We have wool that's very uh, comfortable next to skin. Um, and develop and produces lightweight yarns, therefore lightweight fabrics and apparel items. Okay, that's a big range of of uh, different products, and I guess that's also good because you can supply many different markets and customers. And getting back to that military um, apparel, is it? Do I remember correctly that there's actually a U.S. legislation? that requires all wool garments for the military to be made out of American wool? If, um, if, the, Mer if the government uses American dollars to buy uh, uniforms, then that used to, needs to be 100% American. But some of the products are not purchased. They're sold at a PX, so they're sold direct, they're sold, and they soldiers buy them independently. Those do not have to be all American, but those that those products are bought by Department of Defense do need to be entirely American made okay. and sourced. And are they also so then they're also um, sewn like the fabric is made in in the U.S. and also the makeup is done in right. the U.S. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. The entire process is made in the United States. The wool, the yarn, the fabric, sewing, cut and sew. The entire garment is from the United States. Okay. And earlier I mentioned that part of your job description is also uh, government procurement. Can you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit how is the U.S. government supporting the American sheep and wool industry? Uh, really, government procurement is, falls into the military area because that's a, that's a big source for us is, is military. So uh, we also look at other opportunities for other government agencies to be using wool, but the... Uh, The ones that have been most important to wool right now has been the military. Okay, good. Well, then that's clear on that front. And I also remember that you had a program called Let's Grow. And I heard you once talk about it in more detail. And I would like to ask you to explain 
what this program is about? Yeah, um, we have such uh, fabulous wool and uh, sheep products that we'd love to see our sheep industry continue to grow so we can have more wool to sell, more lamb to sell. So there was an effort to work with growers to help them improve their productivity uh, and encourage them to produce more uh, sheep in the United States. And so, but I, if I remember correctly, it was to grow, uh, whether they were like numbers, not to grow two by two percent the block? Or? Yeah, it, it, yeah it, um, it was to increase the total production of of sheep, in, you know, in the United States so that we'd have more production. Mm -hmm. Like other parts of the world, we have a lot of, uh, it's, it's more difficult to be a rancher and farmer. And with more regulations, more stipulations, prices don't always increase as quickly as costs do. Uh, predator control is always an issue. So um, it, we'd want to encourage particularly young, entre young entrepreneurs and young people to stay in farming and continue to invest and grow uh, sheep. And did you see already um, some rewards from that program? Did it already work? And as you expected? Yeah, we've, uh, sheep production is pretty stable right now. We've had some increases over past years, but it's uh, it's been relatively stable over the past few years. But we hope to continue to grow. It, it takes time, obviously. Um, it's a huge investment. It's not um, to buy the land to run sheep is an enormous investment. And so it takes time to see those numbers grow sometime. Yeah, because we wait. You have to wait for those lambs to be born, and then those again to yeah. to have lambs. Right. <laughs> it takes <laughs> time from Mother Nature, indeed. And you mentioned earlier also that um, you want to encourage younger um, growers also to enter the industry and to stay in the industry. Is there something else that you do to attract younger generations into the wool business? Because I, I understand that a lot of other countries also face this situation where a lot of growers are at the age of retirement, but not necessarily have a successor. Is there something that you do to attract young people into the industry? Right. I think every, we, everything we do is really geared towards the future success of the industry. But we do have a young young entrepreneur program where we bring young producers, people interested in the sheep industry, um, to meetings. Uh, we just completed in helping support a uh, a program where they uh, went to various locations in the United States to learn more about lamb wool and uh, wool processing and the industry. So it's, it's education. We try and bring them in and educate them to help them keep those inter that interest. Okay, that's interesting to know. And what role does um, the social media and online communications play in your strategy? How are you using those different channels? Um, we just rebranded our American Wool program. We just just this week, so this is perfect timing, I uh, released our AmericanWool.org website. That's AmericanWool.org, or, excuse me, AmericanWool.org, O-R-G. Um, and it's to experience wool. So we have um, a lot of uh, information on there where consumers can go to that website and, and just learn some very basics about why wool, how to care for wool, um, and uh, how it is a high performance fiber. There's so many people that don't know all the attributes about wool that wool is naturally fire resistant, that it, it absorbs moisture, that it resists, that it doesn't, um, it doesn't stink basically. It um, doesn't promote the growth of bacteria. So therefore socks can be worn for a number of days and won't have the same odor that you might with some other fibers, particularly man-made. Um, there's so many characteristics to be known. So that's what we do on our wool website. And then also with that, we're increasing our social media. We have it, all, all the social media accounts, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, Facebook. We're, we're so excited about our message and we want to get it out. I, there is just so much that people don't know about wool. And um, 
I'm here in Salt Lake City for the outdoor retail show and visited a number of retailers and brands. And I think even what is what was clear to the wool team that was here for the uh, show is that there's so many people that don't understand the wool fiber and what it has to offer. It's a fiber that's been around for centuries and centuries and thousands of years. However, very few people know all the attributes that it can bring to an apparel garment. So education is key for us. Yeah. And we hope to do that through social media and, of course, one-on-one education. What is your experience so far with the social media different platforms? Is there one that you find that helps you the most? Like would Facebook yeah. be yeah. helping you most? or? You know, we're just um, we're just opening up that space really again to increase our social media. So I don't know that um, we've had one that works. We start with we started out with Facebook, and then I think it'll. I think the base of it, of course, will be our website, and then we'll see. And we're uh, actually beginning to execute that program. So I'll hopefully report back to you and have more to let you know about what yeah. works best. <laughs> That's good. And yeah. I'll make sure to link also to the new website in the show notes so that people can find it and find out more about American Wool. And before we right. end, what give us a little bit an outlook. What are the topics that ASI will focus on in the upcoming year? Um, I think um, some of the key issues, of course, is to let people know our story about American Wool. Uh, and about the way that producers are committed to creating quality fibers, quality products. And along that is also to produce an, uh, wool that comes from animals that have been ha handled properly and with care. It's to the producer's best interest to handle the sheep properly, but most importantly, it's just the right thing to do and something that growers do every day and work very hard to make sure that they're taking care of the animals that they believe and are committed to and care for deeply. So um, we will further develop some programs to help consumers know and brands know about the care that is given to sheep along that, lo along that line. We do have a, you can go to our uh, website at sheepusa.org and see the commitment that we have with a sheep safety quality assurance program that we've had in, in place for years, as well as the sheep care guide, which is all about helping to educate producers about uh, properly taking care of sheep. Yeah, that's super important. And I'll also uh, have a link for that uh, ready. And can you, you said you just are at the outdoor retail show in Salt Lake City. Can you give us a short summary of what you saw at the show? Uh, it's, it's summertime and this is, well, it's a summertime show and yet wool is still really, really important and dominant in the show, particularly in the hosiery market. Wool socks can be worn year round and that was very um, evident as we see a number of hosiery companies interested in wool and selling a lot of wool year-round because wool massively absorbs moisture and it um, is odor resistant. So um, they're a perfect fiber for the sock industry. Uh, we all saw a lot of next to skin wear, of course, wool t-shirts and wool is great for those outdoor enthusiasts that are hiking and really exposed to various temperatures where that's where wool really uh, performs and is uh, does its best is when you're exposed to warm weather and then cooler weather and uh, it varies a little bit because it helps regulate temperature. So um, we saw a lot of wool. Uh, outdoor industry is growing by leaps and bounds here in the United States. Well, that's good news for wool and thank you for giving us that little glimpse into the show. I thank you very much, Rita, for your time and explaining us all about the American sheep and wool industry. I hope all your efforts in regards to the rebranding and the new consumer website will have success and we'll make sure that we also support wherever we can with the podcast. Elisa, thank you for the opportunity to talk about American wool and your interest and support of the industry. 
it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hopefully you enjoyed this interview with Rita Curlis Samuelson from the American Sheep Industry Association. If you want to have an easy access to all the different websites and social media accounts Rita mentioned during the interview, you can find them at elizabethvandelen.com forward slash 044. Once again, that is elizabethvandelen.com forward slash 044. We love that you're listening to this podcast and really appreciate you. Make sure you also connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. See you there and bye for now.